بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر سٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم ٹو دس فرسٹ ریکارڈیڈ لیکچر اینڈ دا ٹاپک آف دا لیکچر ایز یو کین سی از ٹرانسلیشن اینڈ ٹرانسلیشن اسٹڈیز ان دس لیکچر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ٹو کانسیپٹس بیسک کانسیپٹس آف دس کورس ان مائنڈ یو دیز آر ویری امپورٹنٹ بیکاز Uh, your course, although the title of the course is uh, the translation of Holy Quran into English, but uh, <clears throat> because there are two streams in this title and one stream requires uh, our orientation towards the area of theoretical framework of uh, translation and translation studies on one side and the second stream requires us to uh, be familiar with uh, the existing English translation as you know we have uh, already discussed the outline and uh, teaching learning method uh, etc so let's start but before we start uh, I would like to uh, uh, point out to some uh, basic things that will be uh, very helpful uh, and this is perhaps the right time to indicate to, uh, to such thing uh, this uh, method that we have adopted for uh, uh, learning and teaching Uh, is a blended method where you would be watching uh, the recorded lecture and of course uh, uh, preceded uh, by your advanced reading of the uh, the pages from the reading material that I'm sure you have uh, a copy of that uh, reading material uh, the focus would be uh, uh, my focus in these lectures would be on the main point the key points that uh, that are part of uh, uh, those uh, the, as a particular topic so uh, the remaining uh, things details maybe are left for our discussion and question answers because that segment which will take place inshallah face to face inside the classroom is also very important so uh, you know this don't take this as an uh, detailed lecture of the material and uh, other things uh, but only the main points are described here and followed by our uh, uh, discussion and question answer session inside the classroom okay translation and let's start with the etymology of the word uh, english word translation it is derived from latin word translation and i hope my pronunciation is if not 100% correct but near to the original pronunciation in latin language uh, and this word uh, comes from trans which means across and uh, fur uh, which means to carry or to bring so literally the word translation means to carry across or to uh, take something from one side and transfer this uh, particular thing to the other side of of anything you know it, it is just the uh, transfer of something and as for the uh, latin lecio in turn uh, it coming from lettuce the past participle of fur this uh, literal or the etymological uh, brief uh, description of the word translation uh, is very much reflected in the idea of uh, translation but then uh, let's go to the uh, translation uh, in the literature we have uh, dozens of uh, definition of translation but we here we need to focus on the essential elements because the main purpose of uh, our main purpose is to get a clear cut uh, vivid concept of translation or what actually happens in this phenomenon in this social phenomenon which is called translation so we can adopt this method and we can enumerate the essential elements main elements that are always there in any translation activity so number one is a source text i mean this is a text which is originally created in a language number two is the target text which is created based on the source text called tt and sometime it is called product of translation and remember that uh, when we say the source text or the target text we are talking about two things the written text and the oral text so both are included in our discussion then number 3 the essential element is there is must there must be a purpose and this purpose is very important because uh, the purpose is uh, essential part of the source text but the purpose is uh, you know very much clear 
why we are translating this particular text into a certain language and making a product of a translation. Number four, there is always a process because without a process, uh, without understanding the process, we cannot understand the phenomenon of translation. Number five, the essential element of the translation is a function because uh, the target text, when it is read by the uh, uh, readers of target language, it has some impact on their mind, on their cognitive processes, on their images. So there is a function of translation. That means uh, this is not only a product or there is not only a process or purpose. It has also a function that means an impact on the cognitive processes, on images, on impressions, on whatever, you know, we can, uh, we can mention a lot of things on the minds of the uh, target language readers. Uh, I think uh, uh, we, if we combine all these elements, we can constitute our own definition of translation. But I personally, you know, tell you my own preference that, uh, you know, running after uh, some definition is not helpful uh, as compared to trying to understand the concept or making this concept clear in, in our mind is, is in my view because it is very important that you have a clear cut concept and based on that concept, you can also coin your own definition of something. So uh, we have uh, here uh, the uh, famous uh, Jacobson, Roman Jacobson, famous linguist. Uh, he is uh, very much uh, you know, influential in the area of uh, linguistics. He has also uh, defined translation and he has uh, uh, identified uh, three uh, things in 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 the process of translation or in translation number one is that is interlingual translation number two is interlingual translation number three is inter semiotic translation as for the interlingual translation it is the translation that that we have discussed in the previous uh, slide and that is the dominant uh, uh, you know concept in the field as well it is also called uh, translation uh, proper but the intralingual and intersemiotic, we need to understand them. The intralingual means uh, uh, rephrasing or rewording uh, uh, something or summarizing or otherwise rewriting a text in the same language. So, what we if we if we reword, let's take the example of English language, a text written in uh, 17th 18th century. And of course, the language style and the grammar and many things now are obsolete. So if we rewrite that, reword that or re-express this, the content of that, but within one language, it is called intralingual translation. The second, uh, uh, you know, less known uh, for the general public and the general academia is intersemiotic. If a written text is translated for example, into music or film or painting. So the main, uh, the, the, the dominant view is this one, the, as I said, interlingual, which is number two here. And, but the interlingual and intersemiotic, according to Dickie Jacobson is also uh, kinds of translation. We can discuss this point when we meet in, inside the classroom. And if you want more uh, on the concept of translation, you can watch uh, my lecture on with this title rethinking translation in 21st century and that lecture is available in my youtube channel which is uh, uh, translation studies with dr ghazi and i have also given the link here so you can go there there you find complete uh, detailed discussion on how to rethink because it is not nowadays it's not a simple phenomenon it ha it is it has a lot of other uh, aspects that are discussed but for us for this course i think what what i have said is enough and uh, but we, we we you know if 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 you become a seeker if you want to have a little uh, more thirst you can consult that and you can also discuss this in inside the classroom okay the second uh, thing that we want to discuss in this lecture is translation studies we have discussed translation studies so here we try to focus on the element of studies so the studies and here we have uh, three key words describing 
analyzing and theorizing i hope the basic meanings of these uh, words are clear for us so when we describe something we have different techniques we try to uh, we try to uh, enumerate the basic uh, characteristics or feature of something the thing that is being described when we analyze we have a different which is the second or the next step after description that we try to analyze that means we try to uh, study each element separately and then try to understand the underlying relationship between all the elements of one entity and the next would be theorizing and theorizing has also many uh, aspects but the dominant view would be you know uh, creating a theory uh, on something on entity or some phenomenon in the field of translation so what we describe what we analyze and what is theorized uh, here are you know we uh, things that we can see we describe products as a earlier uh, said that the uh, the products in translation are two kind basic two kinds one is the written translation and other is the oral translation processes are ma mainly the cognitive processes that usually take place in the brain of uh, the translator but there are other processes that are taken by for example the translator when uh, he or she translates a text he adopts certain method uh, translating rough translation and revision and then you know uh, we can talk about the uh, language fluency of the target uh, text and also the revision of the terminology and proofreading and and do the finish until it is a finished project the process also encompass the functioning of the translational work in an institution also so uh, the describing the project itself the written translation and oral and the process how the translation has been produced number three the context in which context the translation is being done because the context are very very important uh, here are big questions are uh, raised and they are uh, described or analyzed or theorized number four is agent involved remember one thing that in translation process uh, there are more than one uh, agent i mean there is not only a translator there are a lot of other things in translation process of course the translator is at the center but then the the one who is uh, you know uh, financing the process of translation i mean giving the money to the translator for the translation the publisher itself the the publishers they are also the agents involved in the in the process of because they are they publish the work translated uh, of course for commercial reason for uh, many other reasons as well and also the reviewers the critics those who read and uh, criticize or or, or write uh, you know uh, the critique on on translated work and so on and so forth even the readers they are agents of uh, translation uh, you know number five is the tools and technology nowadays of course there are a lot of tools one on one side we can discuss the computer assisted tools uh, known cat tools uh, usually cat cat tools and then the technology is also part is hard and soft technology for so describing the tools and analyzing the tools and theorizing the tools is uh, you know is, is is in the core area of translation studies impact and uh, studying the describing the impact or analyzing the impact or function or theorizing the impact of uh, uh, translation so the this is uh, mainly the uh, the area of uh, translation studies now the translation studies is comparatively a new uh, discipline and uh, you know it is we know that the uh, the the act of translating is very old it is as old as the existence of human being on this planet no doubt about about that we don't need to, we don't need any explanation for this fact but the study of this phenomenon study of this thing which is called translation as an academic area or domain it, it, it has just only you know the history of 60 years and you know any uh, academic discipline with the, with the 60 years means it's a just infant in in among the other uh, academic areas especially in the area of humanities and social sciences by the way uh, here 
my this is my personal view that the the part of the translation studies actually is uh, is can be considered uh, in humanities but the other part is actually has become now and this is the nowadays more advances are taking place in that direction so that part can be considered part of the social sciences so the new discipline uh, and we can also mention here james s holmes uh, his article the name and nature of translation studies actually he is the he he is the person who actually gave this name and then we have this name because prior to that or even after his uh, uh, famous article the name and nature of translation studies people tried to bring some uh, other term but uh, these term did not get currency among the scholars so he gave that uh, title i mean that this name and this name is now uh, you know every much accepted uh, term for this area translation studies although he write this uh, article in 1972 but it took uh, some i think 16 years uh, when his uh, article became a uh, center of attention by the scholars that was in 1988 when people paid attention to this article and they started thinking about his ideas because he really presented very nice ideas and prepared a map which is known as Holmes map of translation studies and uh, his you know uh, his base for this why he you know said all that he said the translation is the complex of problems so the translation actually is surrounded by problems clustered around the phenomenon of I mean this this is very important there are a lot of problems we can say that they are linguistic problems, grammatical problems, and there are, but there are cultural problems. There are problems related to the, uh, to the customs, problems related to the proverbs, problems related to the uh, politics and ideology, and so on and so forth. These things can be discussed further. Inshallah, we shall be discussing all these things when we touch the theoretical framework of translation studies. Okay, it is always a new discipline, but yet very fast growing. As I said, the age of this uh, academic discipline is just 60 years, not more than that. But, uh, you know, it's, f it's f you know, growing very fast. And for uh, discussing its growth uh, in this manner, we can, uh, we can quickly discuss four things. Uh, specialized uh, uh, translating and interpreting courses and degrees general and specialized both are uh, current in universities number two conferences books and journals number three international organizations and number four government policies so as for the specialized uh, i mean uh, general or specialized uh, translating and interpreting courses uh, are concerned now we have uh, uh, we have uh, numerous universities in the whole world especially in europe and in canada and Australia also uh, those who are offering degree programs of two years three years and in Pakistan of course we can talk about Pakistan we have in our university we have four years uh, BS program in translation and interpretation and to my knowledge of course Numal is also offering Gujarat University also allows me recently Islam University Bahawalpur is, has also uh, launched a uh, complete department of translation uh, in this diary so this is you know this is the expansion but here we are uh, discussing uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 courses and degrees that are uh, you know that we see in uh, Europe and UK especially and uh, Canada even in America also in Asia Chinese and India and Australia as I said earlier there are short courses also or training short courses are also available although i'm just indicating to them uh, but i don't have uh, the latest statistics but to my the statistics that have been mentioned in this book and the edition that we are using i think is it was published in 2008 and he is also uh, referring to a statistic of 1995 so i think we can imagine uh, now the status of uh, all these degree programs or specialized uh, translating programs in the whole world Conferences books and journals as for the conferences now almost uh, all the universities in the whole world they have this sense to uh, Include this aspect of translation when they 
organize a conference on literature or on linguistics or on language this is of course in combination with literature and language but there are separate well focused conferences on just translation and translation studies from different aspects and the journal that we have we can see the the journals a list of very quick uh, examples is babel ttr the translator translation studies turjuman meta and then the publishers the famous publishers those who are publishing books in the area of translation uh, such as uh, continuum john benjamin multilingual matters rodopi rutledge and saint jerome international organizations you know 1953 the, the international federation for translators was uh, uh, established in canadian association for translation studies in 1987 the european society for translation studies in 1992 the european association for studies in screen translation 1995 and international association of translation and intercultural studies 2004 you cannot see there is another which is tap translation association of pakistan which we along with other colleagues established here in the department of translation in 2015 and although this tap translation association of pakistan is very young and uh, you know it has few members but this is the beginning and things usually Uh, are started in this way and number 4 the, the of this uh, the point that we wanted to say is the government uh, policies i mean the governments of the developed countries where need of the translation is has become very sensitive it has become very sensitive activity as for the legal translation and especially the medical translation where we see the government has uh, Uh, introduce the policies that control or regulate the uh, translational activities and also the certification and uh, so on in idea of so on in tra translators those who can translate in especially in the area of law and the court translation and also the medical translation so uh, dear students i think uh, with this uh, we can um, uh, we can uh, finish our lecture here but i must repeat what i said in the beginning uh, you when you read uh, the your uh, the specific pages in your reading material and you watch this lecture and come to the class get ready and jot down your questions and comments and uh, of course the points that that should be discussed in the inside the classroom take very good care of yourself assalamu alaikum